is almost too thin. thing is to get mortar on before you start working it to get it perfect and one thing you will not do is get it perfect you can get it very good but this stuff hits a certain point in setting up where if you continue messing with it you'll mess it up you can see a rough spot right there where I went back over it when I shouldn't have. One good thing is, it's, I think it's okay for it to look a little rustic and not necessarily perfect. Oh, absolutely. It adds a little texture. Gives it that English village look, English, old English. Cottage. Cottage look, there you go. painting to do. I'm going to make that wood a lighter gray. And we're going to paint those steps. It's a totally different look than that 70s brick. We've got a very unusual style of house. It's the Gambrel roof line. So I've never found a house exactly like this one. It's unusual and it's got the, the wood there between those windows. I'm thinking of painting those uh, the lighter gray, but I thought about making it kind of uh, the Tudor look between the, on the inside of uh, make it uh, white on the inside and then gray on the outside so it it looks uh, Tudor like we redid the door to a prettier color look at that dog came out the one door for the cats but um that big dog came out a cat door um we redid the front door to a an Oslo blue bear paint color and put up a new light that added a lot we've got a storm door too a new storm door we're going to put on waiting for a handle for it and that paint job's already gotten scratched by you know who ginger ginger did it but this was what I was working for in kind of the Tudor look. I don't know if the sun's shining too much for you to see it there, but I think it's cute with the white in there and the gray on the outer boards. Just gives it a different look. But this is definitely, it's a, 
a 70s split level, tri-level house that was popular during those times and just trying to make it look a little more modern. But we're enjoying it. It's definitely brightened up the house for sure because that dark brick, it almost disappeared into the tree line. We'll have to do some pretty landscaping once we get all this done, but we were going to wait until we finish this to get that done. We tried several different types of mortar mix and we settled on this that's a little unusual. It's actually a mortar mix that's used for laying tile, but it was the whitest we could find. We started with some of the Argos, but once you mix those with sand, one of the sands we got from the same company where we bought the cement was more of an orange color sand, excuse the mess, um, and it just made it way too buff color, and I've got some samples of that. What we decided to try was this Versabond from Home Depot, White Blanco, and it really is intended for laying tile, but, but, it, it, but it is, it's just cement and sand and it has some polymers in it. And from what I've read, the polymers, polymers are actually a good addition. So uh, it's, it's worked well. We, we definitely like that. It seems like the polymers made it less sandy looking. Um, and just made the consistency better and made it easier to work with for longer. And um, so far, so good. We rented this huge scaffold. Yikes! Oh, you. <laughs> we rented this huge scaffold so he could get up on this part of the house without breaking its neck. Also from Home Depot. This is like a Home Depot ad. And we we need to get that back before the holiday. So he's trying to finish up just this last little bit. And then he can do the rest of it just from standing on the ground or using a regular ladder. But you can see the, the brick that we're covering. And... Once he gets down to the ground level, I'll do some more recording so that you can see close up when he does this section of the brick. I think that'll be helpful.